Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and today we're looking at the revolution of virtual reality technologies, including AR technologies, which, after decades of advancement, they are finally starting to break into the consumer market, and uh, this video serves as a roundup of the emergent technologies on the consumer end right now, including the head-mounted display Oculus Rift, physical input device, the Omni Treadmill, and one-to-one -one motion tracking device, the STEM system. I'll also briefly cover the other side of the coin, augmented reality, in the form of Cast AR. For a history of virtual reality and industry analysis, hit the article link in the description below where I talk in great depth about the history of VR and AR up until now. Let's start with introducing different devices that are out right now. And uh, as shown on the screen, you can see the major three technologies being combined to create a more immersive gaming experience. What you're looking at here is the fusion of the Omni, that'd be the, the treadmill component, the Rift, which is the head-mounted display, or HMD, and the STEM system, which is the motion tracking technology attached to the demonstrator's peripherals, his, his legs, his arms, and so forth. Let's talk about each of these systems at work, starting with the Omni. The Omni, or Omnidirectional Treadmill, was kickstarted at $1.1 million and is being developed by Virtuix. And the Omni uses custom shoes on a low-friction, grooved surface to track the user's physical movement as input. The device can be tuned for individual games, so you can set the input speed and its in-game translation. If you wanted to do a one-to-one -one conversion of physical movement to uh, effectively WASD, WASD movement, that could be set up. The idea here is to replace the tried and true WASD with physical movement, so it's not exactly ideal for competitive play, and if you're the type of gamer who wants to come home and sit down and relax, it might not work for you either, but it makes for excellent immersion opportunities and exercise opportunities. The Omni is equipped with a support bar and harness to keep the user in place when fully head mounted and can be easily dismantled and stowed away. It costs around $500, far cheaper than a traditional treadmill if you're making that comparison, and is natively supported by any game that supports traditional keyboard input. When speaking to Amir Rubin of Six Sense, the, the company that's developing the STEM system, he stated that Quote, the Omni has potential to revolutionize the home exercise equipment market. And I think he's got a point. My question to him was, you know, is this kind of expensive? It's 500 bucks. And personally, yes, it's, it's a fair price in terms of what you're getting. It is actually fair, but it's about half the cost of a high end gaming machine. And so, uh, relatively speaking, it is, it is fairly expensive. The problem with this line of thinking, Ruben said, is that I'm making the comparison to strictly gaming devices when I should be comparing it to other more equivalent examples like a treadmill. The Omni uses software to convert physical steps into keystrokes but is also an open development platform so game developers can work more closely with the Omni team uh, Virtuix on a software level if they wanted to. The Omni consists of shoes, uh, special shoes, the octagonal platform itself, and a support harness. And moving to the STEM system now, the STEM system is a, uh, it's being developed by Six Ends, first of all, and it's a series of motion tracking modules that produce a one-to-one -one real world to virtual world input conversion. If you move one degree up and one millimeter to the side with this device in your hand, it'll track and convert that to in-game movement. The system is comprised of a base which handles all the logic and processing, and signals the wireless tracking modules. Uh, it also includes up to five individual stems, which are uh, modules that can be equipped to peripherals, the user's legs, arms, waist, head, all of which serve as points for more accurate in-game movement. The stem modules and stem systems support full six degrees of freedom tracking, so it is uh, six-axis tracking. The STEM module contains a battery and wireless transmitter and can be connected to custom peripherals. So if you've got a 3D printed plastic gun with a slot for a STEM, the STEM can be inserted and the gun will now be movement tracked and, uh, and relayed to the game. So when you move your gun up and down, it will move appropriately in game. Six Sense is the original supplier behind Razer's Hydra interface, so they've got some experience. The Hydra was wired, but the new STEM system will be fully wireless and modular, which is a pretty big deal when you're looking at combining it with other tech like the Omni. And finally, Oculus Rift. I'll talk briefly about Cast AR after this. The Rift is likely already known by most of you. It's a modern head-mounted display, or HMD, that allows full immersion and a wider field of view. Uh, the Rift has a diagonal FOV of 110 degrees, pretty close to our full human FOV of around 180 degrees. 
and will ship with a 1080 display in the full consumer version. Special lenses are used to help create the wide FOV effect and give the appearance that the game world sort of wraps around the consumer's peripheral vision, providing better overall immersion and player presence within the game. This is in contrast to old HMDs from more than a decade ago, in some cases back to the 60s, which uh, used a more square 4 to 3 type aspect ratio or similar, and it was kind of a the display was off in the distance, so it was really sort of isolating. And uh, Oculus Rift has arguably championed the resurgence of VR technology in modern times, given its almost too perfect feature set and expansion on HMD technology, which has sort of been a dead space for about a decade now. And HMDs, of course, uh, being the, the head-mounted display with the actual visual component, are naturally a bit more popular because that's kind of what science fiction has popularized. So that is now going to be available, it looks like, about next year sometime. It's already available for developers. As with the STEM and Omni, the Rift is an open development platform, and the Oculus VR team is working closely with game developers to properly integrate their VR solution. There are several development obstacles with VR, including nausea and UI design complexities, but these are discussed in uh, more depth in the featured article below. One of the hurdles, though, is that the Rift, much like most of VR, is very isolating. It's ideal for gamers who want immersion and don't want to be interrupted, but poses issues for gamers who prefer same room local gaming with friends or LAN events or something like that. This is where AR technology kind of shines, or augmented reality technology, for its preference of augmenting what already exists rather than immersing in a virtual world uh, alone, effectively. AR tech has been used in psychiatry and medical fields for a number of years now, helping stroke victims and those who are paralyzed by phobias, but Cast AR is really the first bit of gamer-focused AR tech to hit the market at an affordable price, so it's, it's very consumer-oriented rather than medical-oriented. And being developed by ex-Valve employees, Cast AR is basically a pair of glasses that uses holography techniques to produce a 3D holograph atop a special reflective cloth surface. The glasses use tiny projectors above each eye to project the image onto the retroreflective surface that ships with the device. Cast AR is also networked, which is pretty cool, so if you're playing D&D on a tabletop with friends and building a dungeon for the players to explore as a DM, someone in a remote location could network in and view the same dungeon on their own Cast AR cloth and system from another location. And uh, as for VR, it's very impressive right now, very promising technology, and I really do think that uh, Oculus, uh, especially Oculus Rift, has some promise in the gaming industry and will be fairly globally adopted. Uh, as for prices, they are all very affordable given what they offer, so the prices are fair. It is about $1,000 to buy the entire kit if you wanted the Omni, Oculus, and STEM system. If you just wanted an Oculus and the STEM system, it'd be much cheaper. It'd probably be somewhere in the five to $600 range, somewhere in there. Go hit the link in the description below if you want more information on this. It has links to all the technologies as well on page two of the article, so you can check out each individual technology. And we'll try to follow these technologies as they begin to hit the market next year, maybe get some hands-on videos with them. And that's all for now, guys. I'll see you all next time. Peace.